Bulletproof Radio, a state of high performance. There's a lot of anger. I, I didn't see a doctor for four years. I was really pissed in my late 20s. I'm like, you guys have no clue what you're talking about. You, you think I'm you know, sneaking Snickers bars and I'm doing what you said and I'm just weak and tired and hungry and all that. And and that's part of part of it too is fixing that rift between people and doctors because most doctors really do want to help. They just didn't have the information. And at least now it, it's out there. I well, think any doctor who reads any of your books is going to have to at least scratch their head and say, maybe there's two ways to lose weight. <laughs> well, that's the thing. When I'm when I'm uh, writing and, and with the title, so originally I told you I wanted to call this in praise of fad diets, but that was never going to fly with my editor. That was my fantasy. Um, then it was, and I think I have a chapter called, still called in praise of fad yeah. diets. Then, then it was how to think about how to eat. That was my wife's suggestion. I thought that was terrific because, you know, basically the idea is we've been getting lean people's diet advice. So lean people do what the, it, the authorities tell them to do and it works for them. And then they say, well, it just keeps me thin. Clearly but it'll keep It works everyone. until they get cancer. Yeah, there's that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It works for them <laughs> in the short term. We don't know what's going on in the long term, so we don't have those trials. Um, so... You know, what we need to accept is that those of us who gain weight easily are different from those people who aren't. I mean, this is one of my revelations in doing this work. Um, that they, I told you, Newton's law of obesity is uh, you get fat because you're taking more calories than you expend. And that means the difference between a lean person and an obese person, or some, if you have two kids who are both 17, you know, 18 years old and they're both relatively lean, and one goes on to become obese and the other, stays lean. The difference is the one who went on to become obese ate more than he expended and the lean person didn't. Yeah. So that's the fundamental, that's the only, the, if these researchers thought about it, which they don't, but if they did, they would conclude that the difference between a, a person who gets fat and a person who stays lean is just how much they eat and exercise, nothing else. No physiological difference, no hormonal differences, no fuel partitioning differences in the body no insulin differences or pick your hormone. It's just how much you eat and exercise. So this is insane. And what we need to understand is that those of us who fatten easily, we can't eat what lean people eat, because if we do, we'll be fat, hungry, tired, grouchy. And then when we go in to see the doctors, they'll accuse us of cheating on the diet because we're still heavy. That's one yep. of the epicycles. If someone stays heavy and they're doing what you tell them to do, and you, they say they, you're doing what you tell them to do, then they're lying to you. And I mean, this is built into the literature. 1930s, you could find doctors documenting that their, their, their overweight pediatric patients are lying to them about their diets, and therefore they just lack willpower. Um, wow. So anyway, you know, all this has to be re Jiggered. You have the right paradigm. Obesity is a hormonal disorder. It's a hormonal dysregulation of fat accumulation, and the link to diet is through insulin. So you minimize insulin, and you could do it by fasting for long periods of time or intermittent fasting. You could lengthen this time that you're, you know, mobilizing fat rather than storing it, which is the time that your insulin levels are low, and you can lose the weight you stored. 